Seven years of uni already in the nutrition industry and the reality is that you can't afford it. And what if I do four years of uni and then I'm not sure if this is the industry and you're like, oh, geez, another degree. Hi, I'm Marlon Marisha and I'm from Fire Boot Camp and today I have an interview with Duncan Hunter. And Duncan is an ex Fire Boot Camp student. He's just finished the program and uh, he's got his first job and I think he's got a really inspirational story and he wanted to change his career and he was a dietitian and he wanted to become a programmer and today we're going to talk about how he went through those steps to become a programmer and I think it's something that many of you out there at home sometimes think I want to change my career but it can be really tough at times when you're all alone in your bedroom or you've got family around that can be negative and, and sometimes it, it can be something that you think that you just can't do. Duncan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Before we start, tell us a little bit about who you were, what you've been doing in your career, and then we'll move on to what you're doing today. Okay. So for the last 10 years before the, the technology stuff started, I was a dietitian. I worked for myself, I had my own business, and it was fantastic. I got to do lots of different things, but I kind of feel like I did this lap around the industry. So I worked as a clinical dietitian at the hospital. I worked at the university, uh, did some, published some research and teaching, and got to do some work in the kind of the marketing arena for companies helping on radio and TV promote their brands. So it was really great. I got to do lots of different things, but I kind of never really settled. I was kind of, I'd done a lap, I felt like, and I'd kind of touched on all the main areas and I had opportunities in all of them, but I just didn't feel settled and like I wanted to specialise for the next 10 years in any of those areas. And I thought, oh, maybe technology is a way forward. So I had this opportunity to make some software with my brother. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of where I started turning. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that was about, probably about three years ago now. Yeah, so you, you're a dietitian. You had an idea to yep. build an app mm -hmm. in your industry. But well, what made you make that decision to be, well, everyone was, to have a go? Everyone told me not to, honestly. And, you know, I'd played around with it a whole bunch in terms of just like styling stuff, HTML and CSS things and making basic WordPress sites and really loved it. Uh, but I was totally overwhelmed with the idea of learning a whole discipline, like, a you know, it's a lifetime to learn that stuff. Uh, so I was like, oh, I don't know if I should. And everyone was like, no, just focus on the business side. Don't bother learning any of those things. Uh, but I was like, no, I'm, I'll at least make a start. And... Um, from from the get go, it was just it was on. I was just in love with it and just wanted couldn't find any more time in my day to do it. Even though it was something I was like, oh, I don't know if I'll ever actually get to use this. I just had a passion, kept doing more and more of it in my spare time. Yeah, that's great. Mm. Um, you know, the the your mentor Adam Stevenson, the Fire Bootcamp, was presenting the other day, and mm. he said that he's learning a new technology called Xamarin. Yeah. And he said that he would find himself at nights while he's preparing for the presentation, programming, saying just one more. I'm just going to do one <laughs> more task and finish it. It's like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I think that passion that you have now, it's good to see that he, after you know, 20 years of development, still has that same passion. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Tell us about when you started to learn yourself, what are the challenges you hit? What, what obstacles did you face? I think the, uh, besides just feeling dumb because it takes time and stuff, you know, there's a lot of trial and error in it. Uh, I think the the biggest challenge is, well, first of all, I was paying someone out of my mm. pocket to go give me some coaching. So I'd go around to their house and I'd spend an hour with them once a week. And it was on top of all my other work duties at the end of the day. And you know, it, just, it just wasn't working. So that was one of the big challenges. And then I, so I stopped doing that and started doing Pluralsight, and, uh, which is a site online, uh, which a lot of people probably heard of to, to learn. And that, that really helped a lot. So I was doing lots and lots and lots of Pluralsight online. That's pretty much how I kind of learned to develop because I could watch you know the best people in the world just go step by step through stuff yeah. uh, but some of the big challenges with that is that everyone just does these hollow world applications yeah. so you kind of I kind of reach this point where I'm like this gut feeling that I'm gonna start learning bad habits because I can see that there's this other way that happens in the enterprise but everything I'm learning here is kind of this simple well rehearsed sort of process and I that was one of the challenges. I was like, I can keep progressing. I'm making steps. And I'm starting to make applications, but I just, I, I just had this gnawing feeling that I was learning bad habits. Yeah. So, so one of the challenges I think people find is when they do these tutorials, they learn the basic ways to build basic apps. But then you said you were opening up enterprise apps like code, a code base, and mm. you were seeing it structured differently, and you were seeing things that you'd never seen before. And that's yeah, one yeah. of the reasons why you decided to come to the boot camp. So tell us a bit, about, a bit more about that. 
Yeah, I can remember, so I could make like an MVC application with some Angular and things like that. And, you know, I would go on to a site to learn about some technology and then I'd see their code on GitHub and I'd be like, what are those other seven folders like? And why have they separated it all out in all these different pieces and which bit connects to this bit, connects to this bit? And it's achieving the same thing, but in an enterprise way. And, you know, that was part of that thing where I'm like, oh, there's, there's, there's more here. And, it's at a grander scale and everyone's so opinionated. It was really hard to decipher from learning on Pluralsight what, what is best practice and what should you do as your next steps. Yeah. It's very kind of learn to code. It's not about decision making as much. Yeah. So you get to a point where you, well, about a couple of years, you, you've taught yourself and you feel like you're progressing, but then you make a decision to come to Fire Boot Camp. Yeah, you know, it was really a decision point for me when I, I found Fire Boot Camp. It was like, if I can make it through nine weeks, and still be in love with the idea and still want to push forward with that change, then this will help get me off this kind of uh, fork in the road or this kind of intersection I felt like I was stuck at for a while. I was kind of looking to get off that crossroad and kind of be a bit more decisive yeah. because it was just too hard to do both. Like, it was too hard to be a nutrition expert and, a, and learn coding and be effective at it at the same time. And I think a lot of people find themselves in that place where they're starting to get really good and really passionate, but they've got this job that they still have to do to, to earn an income. Mm. And making that step from a job that's paying money to try initially to get a job where no one has any respect for you because you have no credentials mm -hmm. or you have no history. Um, and then even if you did get a job, like how do you, you know, what are you going to get paid and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, and, so, and these are real, it's scary. It's like any career change. University, why didn't you go to university instead of going to a fire boot camp? The reality is that you can't afford it. And what if I do four years of uni and then I'm not sure if this is the industry? And you're like, oh, geez, another degree. I know so many people who didn't do technology degrees who are just, I'd love to be in their shoes in this industry. So it's one, it seems like one of those unique industries that if you actually want to learn to do hands on stuff, not just the fundamentals, you're probably better off doing something like a boot camp and then moving into technical work where you can have people to mentor you through that process versus spending four years before you actually get into a real life situation. Yeah. yeah. One of the things we find is even at university, when you leave, a lot of the skills you have aren't enterprise ready. Yeah. It's a lot of theory, a lot of uh, technical aspects and a very good foundation. Mm. They give you a very good foundation in, science, in computer science. But then when you go to the workforce, you go, oh, now what, you know, I've got to learn all these new skills again. And the boot camps are very good at that skills section and getting you a job because you did get your first job. So tell us, after the boot camp, you got your first job. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? You know, I had no idea that I'd be able to move across. In my mind, I was like, oh, maybe if I can keep progressing, maybe I can get some part-time work somewhere and maybe somewhere in next year I can you know, start doing you know, half my week as a developer and half my week as a nutritionist. And then the year after that, maybe I can move over. So to me, it was like, wow, this is unreal. I've got the opportunity. I'm just going to go with it. So Duncan, what advice would you give someone who's considering changing career? You know, they've, they've dreamt about it, they want to do it, they're passionate about technology, but they're not really sure if they can do it. What steps would you say they should take to get there? You know, work, work becomes quite a big part of our lives. So if you can immerse yourself in it, then you'll probably be able to make a better choice about, is this right for you? Because if you've got the passion there, you can do, it's not hard work, but you know, if you don't like something, five minutes of it's terrible. So I think being able to immerse yourself in it, it would be my thing to get that opportunity. But I'd try and start making it step by step. So, okay, I'm going to start going to user groups, okay, and I'm going to start learning this technology and great, now the next step is I'm going to try and uh, see if I can get some part-time work. And then if I can get some part-time work, I'm going to try and go up from there. Changing career in general, uh, I think would be the same advice. Like you want to see if that's right for you because mm. if the passion's there it'll just it'll drag you through all of the beginning stuff because there's so much new stuff and uncomfortableness when you're learning all these new things and new people and new traditions so that's great yeah. well duncan thank you for coming on and uh sharing your story with us i My think pleasure. uh and i hope a lot of people get a lot of value out of that and maybe build courage to make those steps to mm. change their career and hopefully change their outlook on life yeah, I, I highly advise it. I think it's, yeah, it's been great.